guests very warmly. So this evening which we hope will be extremely enlightening and very contemporary and relevant for our times. And we are organizing this event in honor of one of our most esteemed human rights defenders, Justice Suresh. And as our invitation said and as our brochure is saying, he completes 25 years after his retirement in defense of human rights. And I think this is something that needed to be honored. It needed to be acclaimed. And in his honor, we have today a very distinguished panel who will speak on human rights today. What are our concerns? We are very happy with a large turnout of students of law colleges and other colleges who have shown keen interest to be here amongst us today. And of course, all our old friends who are old hands at human rights and who have been doing this. But I also uh, welcome our special guest, uh, Justice Bandarman, who, who, who came all the way to be here, the, the panel of uh, Human Rights Commission at the Maharashtra State Commission. And of course, all our panelists who come despite the busy schedule to be with us. This event is organized by four different organizations. Five different organizations. There's so many organizations who come together and each of them have very close association with Justice Suresh. He's been part of the several inquiry commissions uh, that they uh, set up or the human rights issues that each organization has taken up. I will just say only two sentences about Madhuris. Justice Suresh is our trustee and we have a legal and cultural center and he was standing very firmly for gender justice. And he has spoken for gender justice as a judge, presiding judge in the High Court, in public forums, but also in his personal life, which I know very personally, he has all the time defended gender justice and spoken very strongly in favor of gender justice. And I welcome uh, the three daughters of Justice Suresh were here. And each of them will vouch for this, that he has been a father who is completely gender just in all his dealings. Here we also have Justice, we know Justice Suresh only as a public figure, but we have Justice Suresh and his wife here. And I thought that was a very important element of Justice Suresh's personality, not only his public lectures. And we're very happy that his doctors have come here to be part of this event. So Justice Suresh, this, uh, this is in your honor and we are very, very happy to be here. <laughs> this organization will say a few words and introduce themselves. So we start with Henry from People's Court. Yeah. Okay. Friends, uh, good evening. I am Henry, I come from Madurai. Tamil Nadu and represent an organization called People's Watch. And this evening, uh, Justice Suresh, before saying thank you for your own life, because I see this evening as a celebration of your life, I would first like to thank your family, every member of your family, for making him available to many of us, sometimes by him not being with you, many of you at times when he should have been actually with you. I have had long conversations with Dr. Suresh, inviting him for a number of programs in the past 20 years and never, never had he said that I have this particular thing with the family that I have to attend. And that is the sacrifice the family has made and I think all of us here need to first thank the family for making him available to many of us. Dr. Suresh, uh, Today, many people in Tamil Nadu will remember this day. I want to quote only what you used to say. I have done more outside in Tamil Nadu than I have ever done in Maharashtra, was your statement that you used to make in every, almost every meeting that you were, you were present in, in Tamil Nadu. He is a regular visitor to Tamil Nadu. Political parties now invite him for for, for events directly 
uh, he, is, he is there for, for addressing lawyers' meetings of political parties. He is there for a number of public hearings, etc. And therefore, on behalf of a number of organizations with whom we are associated in Tamil Nadu, not forgetting HRF and not forgetting Aussie, who was extremely close to you and who is no more, I think we, I want to bring those special greetings from all of them whose names I don't want to, to, to mention now. Whether these are issues on, of police atrocities, whether these were issues of, of Dalit atrocities, whether these were issues in relation to the coastal, uh, coastal issues, particularly prawn farming and a host of other coastal issues, or exactly 25 years ago, the Kaveri riots where you, where you were and the riots we saw continued. I think you were there always for us with a passionate appeal for human rights which was never judge-like. And I think if there is somebody who has to learn from you today, it is the judiciary which has to learn from you today. It has, it has, it has functionaries of various national and state human rights institutions across the country who have to understand from your own life and your own practice what human rights can be and what human rights when held and acted upon can mean to thousands and thousands of poor people across the country with no law, with no legislation, but only yourself and the team of people around you. And I think you did it. People across the country know you only because of what you have been to them. I think we need also to bring greetings from the Asian Human Rights Commission, which has been extremely close to you. And you have played a very important role to the Asian Human Rights Commission many years ago. And I think I will, I will take the, the burden of of, of wishing you on behalf of a number of your friends in, 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 in Hong Kong with the Asian Human Rights Commission. Last, Justice Suresh never liked to work outside the country. He always liked to work inside the country. I've, I've had two, if I remember, three uh, events with you. One was in Strasbourg in, in mid-90s. We were both together with a few others and that was more of a, of a training. But then you came to Geneva, and uh, this was in the initial days of our caste, anti-caste uh, campaign outside the country, and you said, never again will I ever come to this, this body. This has got no relevance for me. This was a very, very strong statement that you made in Geneva. You were also there in Durban. You were also there in Durban with us in all the struggles we did, in all the, the dharmas that we, we, were, we were up to in, in Durban on the caste issue, you were there. And therefore, I only hope, I still want to remember 2004 in Bhuvaneshwar when we had attempted with the with the Human Rights Law Network a joint program on trying to get a few judges, retired judges, trying to follow your, your footsteps. We don't have many. We don't have many these days. It's sad, but that's the truth. No judge who retires wants to come into public life. They all want to get into money making these days. And I think therefore we need to celebrate your life and talk about your life because your life has been completely different and therefore these 25 years are extremely precious. Thank you Justice Suresh for your life and thank you for coming. Muslim Law Reform and Muslim Women's Rights. So we have Irfan here to, to say a few words. Friends, it's an honor for me to be here in this meeting this evening to honor Justice Kuroshi. We really celebrate his 25 years, but the roots were laid much before, even when he was on the bench. My first encounter with Justice Suresh was as a young lawyer who had, who had gone there to file a petition and to save a tree. You had to mention the matter at 11 o'clock. I went 
five minutes to eleven and the board had given and I could not mention the matter. I went the next day. Again the board had begun and I could not mention the matter for urgent reasons. Then I asked somebody, what's the matter? Is my watch, is something wrong with my watch? You know, he comes half an hour before. So if you want to mention your matter, you must come 45 minutes before the time when the bench sits. I went and in my petition when I was asking for reliefs, there were lots of buts and ifs. Lots of, you know, because uh, you can't get the whole relief uh, at interim stage, so you put so many, uh, you know, I had complicated, and Justice Suresh gave me more than what I was praying for at interim stage in saving the tree. And uh, that's how I remember Justice Suresh. That was my first encounter. Later on, practice in court and saw through a number of excellent judgments, particularly as far as human rights issues were concerned. All the, today, all the most communal elements in our country come elections and all of them become very secular. Thanks to Justice Suresh. Because all those elections that were fought by Shikshana on communal plan, their elections were set aside as corrupt electoral practices. And suddenly, come elections and most communal, organ, uh, most, most communal party becomes secular for those for that period. And uh, if there is less, if, if we, we have less communal noises during election campaigns, uh, I think, and his judgments were upheld by Supreme Court as well. Number of tribunals of which he was uh, part, uh, Bombay riots, 92-93. Uh, the, the People's Tribunal and their report came within months. Uh, Sri Krishna Commission took a long time. Obviously, they have to uh, follow all formalities and legal procedures. Uh, Sri Krishna Commission took a long time and gave the same findings, similar findings. If not, uh, within one month, Justice Suresh and Justice Rao to produce a very good uh, report. Number of meetings uh, when we were there, Justice Suresh would always be there whenever uh, we called, we needed him for any meeting. And even if the mobilization was poor for some reason, he would come and console us, don't worry. Put his hand back, uh, uh, put his hand behind our back and say, don't worry, this happens. And he would speak with all the fervor, even if the audience was a very small audience at, at, at times. Justice Suresh has been teaching human rights, human rights diploma uh, in Bombay University. Uh, and helping, he's a, teach, he's a teacher, he's a friend, he's a guide, he's a supporter, he's a lot of things and he means all, all of this for Center for Study of Society and Secularism and for the secular movement, for communal harmony in the country at large and for democracy. Justice Suresh, you have dedicated your 25 years after the bench, even while on bench you were doing the same work. But you have continued for 25 years after. We need to carry on this work and our real respect and real honor will be in all of us who are present in the hall carrying this work for the... Thank you, Justice Suresh. Thank you very much. Edwin is today standing in the shoes of Mr. Ozzyman and his group. Henry had just mentioned Human Rights Foundation in Chennai. But Edwin, correct me, he's from Bangalore. But he has stepped in to shape this organization and take it further. So Edwin, you watch. Yeah, uh, it's a very humbling <coughs> thought that uh, to pay respects and thank you uh, for a productive uh, life of 25, which is after retirement. 
uh, when my whole career is less than that. So I must really thank you for that first. But I must also thank you for uh, another relationship that we actually shared because uh, Aussie, of whom uh, Henry spoke so fondly, had, was also my guru. And to honor the guru of my guru, I think that is a very humbling thought for me too. I think it says quite a bit about uh, what uh, Henry was saying earlier about uh, Justice Suresh's contributions being maximum in Tamil Nadu that two of the organizing organizations are from Tamil Nadu and uh, going through the history of uh, the Human Rights Advocacy and Research Foundation uh, we find that uh, Justice Suresh had his finger in virtually every pipe that we could take off. Child rights, he's there. Child labor, he's there. <coughs> um, postal action, he's there. Uh, prevention of atrocities against Dalits, he's there. And he was there when none of these were either fashionable or even mainstream in the human rights defenders community. And I think that is where uh, he has shown that through 25 years and more, that justice needs to be done not only through the formal institutions, but can be done by other social institutions when people are willing to lay their social and other capital on the line. And thank you very much for doing it, Francisco. Human Rights Law Network and Justice Suresh is a trustee of Human Rights Law Network. Unfortunately, Pauline, who is also an organizer and a close friend of Justice Suresh, could not be here, um, but he's been a main supporter for Madras, for Human Rights Law Network, for Boys Collective, and many organizations working on human rights. I just want to say a few words here about gender justice. Firstly, Justice Suresh, when he was a judge of the city civil court, introduced the concept of counseling with the help of social workers, which became part of the Family Force Act in 1984. And today it has become a very integral part of family courts, not just in Maharashtra, but all over the country. But it starts with us. It starts in Mumbai. And it starts in a, continues in a family court. And I think that's a very important way of resolving matrimonial disputes and it was he who initiated it which became an institution today. Second thing I want to mention, uh, Justice Rich uh, retired in 1991 as a High Court judge and as Edwin rightly said, these issues were not fashionable then. These issues were not fashionable when Madhuri started that women's rights uh, as human rights in 1991. But I remember when I started my practice a judgment of Justice Suresh, which held that maintenance to a son cannot stop when a son turns 18, because the son has to educate himself. And how will he do this? It was a single judge judgment, and we used it consistently in so many of our cases. But it got overturned by a division bench, which we did not disclose in the family court. We kept using this judge judgment to advance the rights of women, though we knew that it had been overturned, but as far as we are concerned, it doesn't matter. Today it's become, after 25 years, it became a very important issue and it's coming again and again that how can we stop maintenance to women uh, when the children become, uh, sons become 18 as if the sons do not have to study further. Justice Suresh himself has taken up issues of women's rights, child custody, not just in public domain, but also with his own daughter's the situation. And we are very happy here, Mr. Mujal is come who's also been a strong supporter of Justice Suresh, we share the same chamber. I'm very happy, sir, you, you can make it today. And, uh, and his commitment to the concept of Madhis Legal Center. And what Madhis Legal Center aims to do is to bring justice to the marginalized, to the people who cannot access courts. And it is for this reason 
Justice footage has always been there, and our trust is the all women trust. Our organization is all women. And it is all women trust, it was always there. And we never felt out of place among these very, very forceful women. And he could adjust himself so well, it was something amazing. And it is these qualities, apart from his being there in public, it is also these small things that I think are extremely valuable as a human being. And I just want to bring this on the table to me. And also I remember in 1992, 93, post the riots when the commission was sitting, he lost his wife. I remember having going there for the funeral, for instance. And within two days he was back. He was back doing the commission work. And I, 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 I was pretty young, we were all very young then. And I was amazed that how he came back to continue the work. Because he was the, the commission was going in every place, the entire commission was going to every single bus And it had a schedule. And he did not waver from that schedule. And all of us know how he continued with this. And thank you, Suresh, Jesse Suresh, for being a feminist man, advancing the rights of women in public and in public. Freedom. One of the things which I was doing, I can tell you, we have so many people in Mahatma Gandhi. 
one of the things I was doing was, uh, I had a chalka in my room. I was telling you the first test. I had a chalka. And as students and others come, I'd sit with the chalka and throw it. The spinning is chalka and so on. So much so, I went to my village and I had even grown water in my compound. No, of course, you can't even grow water in in a, in, a, in a coastal area. But I did that because we are so committed to Mahatma Gandhi's ideas. I must also tell you, Mahatma Gandhi had introduced one small thing because all those who are in Congress or who are fighting freedom should wear khadi. And I was wearing khadi. But he made a condition. If you want to buy khadi, you have to buy from a, a shop exclusively for Kadi, but whoever wants to buy one yard of Kadi cloth, you have to submit one, what you call ready, that's 80 rounds of the thread. You have to do that, 80, and that you have to give. And without that, no Kadi material could purchase, nobody could purchase that. And the cost of that was two and a half and eight paisa. But I must tell you, I was doing it, and Many Congress workers, and some of us others are doing, many Congress workers, if they want to they have to wear khadi, but they don't spin, they don't know what to do, they would come to us. And I've given them my yarn so that they could buy khadi. It's a kind of thing. Because today, I think Mahatma Gandhi is forgotten. And uh, the present regime, of course, has scanned the spectrum of Mahatma Gandhi. And I think I don't know, we have only photos, and I don't think they will beyond that. Uh, but I tell you, I did not come that. And I tried to bring a teacher in my own village school. Uh, I tell you, I got a first class in BA and the second rank in the University of Vidras. And I, we have in our village, my father was the founder of a, a, a school which had become by the time 1944-45, which had become a high school. And, uh, so I did my day and my father thought that I could be a teacher in the school. And uh, surprisingly, in spite of a first class BA, I could not get admission for BA before that day. And I think that was a turning point. So I joined the school for a short period as a teacher, uh, but soon thereafter, of course, uh, somebody used me to go to Belgaum, and that's how they law. And then of course that is how I came to Bombay and became a lawyer here in Bombay. I know regrets. I think uh, more than a lawyer uh, to become a judge. And I think uh, a judge can be quite tell off. See, that's the most important thing. I love to be a judge. And I very often I say, why should a judge retire? I don't understand the concept of retirement for a judge. Lord Denny did not retire on his own till till he decided. After about eight, nearly 18, he decided to retire on his own. Because much later, the English government introduced age of retirement at age of 75. We retired at the early age of 60. Why should it be? That's a prime time when a judge can do quite a good work. But why should you retire at 62? The Supreme Court has a retired age of 65. Why should they retire at 65? What do they do? I don't know. You know what the judges do for retirement. And I feel they could have been more a, a sort of asset to the judiciary because they had only been allowed to continue, but that would not happen. My introduction to uh, human rights freedom was as a judge, I was always sympathetic to the poor. A poor man comes, as, our, as Neger says, he develops gender issues, for maintenance matter, custody matter, all the things. I would go out of my way. Why should a matter remain in court for years again? I don't understand. We can deal with that. We can deal with that better. We can give top priority. We can do that. But of course, it was not happening. So as a judge, I was that. But I tell you, one of the most important things after retirement, uh, what do you do? Can you forget your commitment to the Constitution? We had a judge in the Supreme Court. Uh, he was the Chief Justice, and uh, I think you all know that one day he said that uh, he was talking about 
going about uh, women. And he said, oh, she is like, the woman is like a mother. Good child, mother. But her place is in the, in the kitchen. And, and the chief justice of India said that. And of course, I still remember Indira Jai Singh. She was 19 years at that time. Some others were there. And they all protested. And then, of course, they invited me for that meeting. Say, the sitting judge. I attended the sitting that meeting. What I said was at that time, as a judge, you have taken hold of, uh, of the Constitution. So you can, can you say that I'll be true to the Constitution and I'll sit on the bench and I'll do exactly the other things that are um, off the bench. Can you do that? You can't do that. That can be <coughs> So the same question continues. But when you retire, can you forget your commitment? Other days we had general assembly of the of Bajanis at the end of that. And somebody raised this question. And I said, my commitment to the constitution, I can never forget. One of the main mentors of people like me was Jassi Krishna. He was a judge for seven years, but he worked he, for 37 years, after the 34 years after retirement for public justice in human rights. He was the first one to ask me, and I retired, I retired in 91, but before that I was telling some small incident. People knew, there was also, there was, uh, before that I was telling that other thing also. Uh, see, Amnesty International was, was what we do in this country. Nobody would listen to us, Amnesty International. And, uh, Somebody made some, some commitment to some talk of Amnesty International was there on for the picture of that incident, capital incident. And as a sitting judge, I was invited. And I spoke there. And I said, I said, I have got all the power to do that sentence, but I do not have the capacity to do it. Because I don't know the accused except in what 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 has been brought before me. Can I say now that he is proved guilty, can I, can I say, he can't actually take away his life. I said, no, I can't do that. My colleagues were taken aback, and that as a sitting judge of the High Court, I said that. But I said, I believe in that. And I tried large number of session cases in the session court, and some appeals in the High Court, but I never gave a death sentence. You don't have to give death sentence, you know how to handle the law, how to understand. And I did that, I did that, I believed in that, and you could do, many things can be done by the judges themselves. Uh, I can just tell you, uh, much later, uh, when, uh, I think when I, uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, soon after my retirement, one important event that was very important, Colin Gonzalez, who had already started his human rights law then, but and I had taken part earlier as a judge in this program. Uh, he invited me. The first thing he did me was to take me. This is the first thing that I did. I retired in July, sometime in August and September. He took me to Mani Delhi. Mani Delhi, where Veda Parker was sitting with style on the Mani Delhi hills. And when the, the level of dam was coming up to protest, and still remember that today you go, Mani Delhi is the water. This is what happened. And there I went that you know, people are struggling for their right to life. And we have, what we have done, they have got the Supreme Court to do the wrong state, and this kind of thing. And I said, okay, we should see what we can do about this. And then, of course, the Bombay riot, Kaveri riot took place in Bangalore. And 21, but today again, there is a similar situation in there. But at that time, again, Jassi Krishna asked me, would you go there? and a member of the people's tribunal. This is what I did. And I tell you, Jesse Krishnaya had at least 13 to 15 committed judges who do any kind of work at his principal request. And we had taken part in many, many inquiries myself and we, along with other judges, we had done that. And today I'm sad to say, uh, I hardly find any retired judge committing himself to do anything for the entity of this kind, they think all the other world. They don't do. I live in a building uh, of retired judges, but no one is interested in what I'm doing. This kind of thing. But I think it's necessary. Uh, we have to think of that. 
and uh, I have nothing much to say. Uh, I basically two things I want to point out. One is Article Two of the Two Covenants, International Covenant Civil Rights, right. and Article Two of the Internal Civil Council Rights. These are the two articles which compel the government to see that rights are made, human rights are recognized and, and protected. Both these articles today, they complete 50 years of okay? In fact, it was the golden jubilee of, because 1966 this covenant came to force. It was the golden jubilee of these two covenants. The importance of these two covenants is not yet known in this country. I wish some, in fact, I still remember uh, years ago, some years ago, few years ago, when, um, when we had a we had a general Bombay High Court. You see, there was a golden period of the Supreme Court, 1970, late 1970, till uh, first quarter of 19. That was a golden period. Supreme Court, we had just cut higher, just in Bhagavati, just in KSI, just in Philopredi, and so on. That was the time when they recognized what is called social action litigation. Social action litigation is for the benefit of, for the health, for the rights of the poor who can't come to the poor. Right to life, they give them really meaning. Right to life, life includes all that goes with life. All that goes with human dignity. This is a kind of thing. And today, the exact opposite thing is this. All these are parts of demolition of the slum and so many things. That is why sometime in 19... Uh, Little later, 1995 or then later, our own High Court passed all the passed orders for demolition of large number of slums in, in the city of Bombay, and uh, and I I felt helpless. Court has passed. Neither went to Supreme Court, Supreme Court would not stay at all. So the demolition took place all over around around Sanjay Gandhi National Park. Large number of people lost their home. Government would do nothing, the court would do nothing. I went to the State Human Rights Commission. A friend of mine was a judge. He was heading the State Human Rights Commission. I always go in and ask him, what do you want to do in this case? He said, legally I'll help you. I said, fuck it, legally. Then not from the human rights point of view. I asked him, he would not think of that. He said, how do, what do I do? I said, many things can be done by these commissions on their own. I took the initiative the judge, as Plato pointed out, to appoint my counselor. Where was the law? I did it on my own. I sent for so many persons, I took the initiative. I told him, you can take the same initiative. You can declare what is happening is fundamentally violating your human rights. But you will not do it. And that is the fate of many human rights commissions in this country today. There are human rights commissions. But when it comes to action, when it comes to enforcing human rights, I think there's a big vacuum. I don't know what to do. These are some of the things always uh, hurt me. Come on, you can do something, do something. That's your case. And I think I should stop now. I want to tell you one last thing. As I left the high court, I felt on that day. My voice shall not be heard in the court anymore. But I posed a question to myself. And conscience can be heard all around the country. Again, thank you.
He was returning from the chambers and I was just trying to find, I was on my mission to find the chambers for me. And then he said, hey, look, I have found some place, but I don't have sufficient finance. I said, that I'm also looking for some place and I also don't have sufficient finance. So let's join hands and share the chambers. And that's how we got the That is the simplicity of the man, flowing with the human kindness. And it is my privilege, because a man is known by the company he keeps. And because it is my privilege to be known, to be the companion of this situation. Otherwise, on the field of the human rights, a lot of things have been said. This situation was spoken about a lot of things. I don't think that I can add anything more. I can merely quote what Iqbal has said. The Khamoshi, Duftabu has said, Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. 